Such a threat to human was noticed by the US President Benjamin Frank, Franklin, and he said, uh, rivers, especially in mountainous land, uh, and land uh, are unruly creatures. The artificial channels are calm and energetic. Uh, and I think uh, the Aland response is uh, good for this uh, saying. Perhaps this unruliness uh, uh, has meant uh, that no ecosystem has suffered as much harm as rivers and streams. And what happened during the time since uh, 200 years? Are the rivers under control, under control of, uh, of human? Uh, and uh, I could hear uh, um, some saying of uh, Jan Makhnelevska, who uh, said in her book, How to Survive uh, with a Man, uh, because a man is also a part of, an important part, part, part of the biology. Human's uh, struggle with biology is not visible. It never gives good results. Uh, I do not think anyone has won this fight yet, and if he has won, uh, he has lost a lot uh, in the end. Uh, of course, rivers are part of nature. They are ecosystem in which living processes are still taking uh, place. And river, uh, what is it? Um, I think this is the most important question what we should ask everyone who want to use the river. Um, please uh, ask uh, you this question yourself, how the river looks like. Uh, you can close your eyes and imagine what uh, the river is. And what do you see? No one wants to close. Precise. Me too. And uh, I imagine, and I think the majority of us uh, see the healthy river uh, occurring around forests, mountains, with many curves, not, not regulated, not polluted. But this is the picture we want to see, I think so. Uh, the first look. But at, um, this is the river too. Uh, however, if it's easy to imagine healthy river, the real view of that one is very difficult to see in our direct environment. Many rivers in Europe are regulated, polluted, and looks like an artificial channel, rather, the natural object of nature. 
many people that changed and deliver beds say that it can help the major and the industries, both. And they say that everything that they are doing for the people, for industries, is also good for the nation. They say that biodiversity then is higher, the water research is higher, the microclimate is better, and the level, level of groundwater is stable. Uh, I regret to say you that every European river is wrongly regulated. If we connect the European river rivers in one long water course, we would have a river with dam uh, at each 1.2 kilometer section. Uh, this is, uh, these are our European rivers. Um, so natural river bed is the first look of a river we, we can imagine if we want to uh, imagine. Everyone wants to choose for holidays, for vacation, a natural river park. Natural, natural stretch of running water. Not regulated, not polluted. Such sections are chosen by ecologists, industries workers, office workers, government workers, river shipping workers. Everyone wants to rest around, around natural conditions of people. I think they come back. I have never seen a picture showing vacation by artificial, artificial river. Why? Because we like we like diversity. We like to discover cities, towns with modern and old infrastructure, new and old vintage uh, buildings. We want to see something new. Uh, and. Uh, the same situation is uh, about uh, the nature, the nature of rivers. And for the same reasons, we choose rivers or other natural areas to we want to discover something new. So, generally, everyone likes diversity. Nowadays, uh, natural diversity is hard to maintain, especially where our governments and our businessmen prefer illusion than action. They, in my opinion, I'm sorry, in my opinion, they uh, prefer to believe than to know. Uh, I think so. For sure, not all, but in many of, uh, a lot of these people want to, want to help, not even not want to, but prefer to believe. Uh, is there a possibility to improve rivers, bad condition, and spend time? Uh, rivers were healthy from when the glaciers melted till the beginning uh, of the industry development. So, more or less since uh, 200 years, they are disturbed. This uh, just uh, 200 years were enough to change uh, 10,000 year story. So how many years we need, or the river needs, to become the same river as it was in the past? It depends on human activity time, and especially on human understanding uh, of river function. How long the river, and especially river ecosystem, can defend itself against human invasion. So invasion, in my opinion. Uh, so, what are uh, our running waters? Is the river a running water? And uh, what are the types of uh, water courses? This is a crucial question we should respond. For example, we have to know that not every water course is a river, but every river is a water course. And, um, and as I said at uh, the beginning, the river is an uh, ecosystem. The ecosystem is a great super organism, maintaining a stable balance, uh, i.e. stable life, uh, a natural ecological connection between individuals, even elementary particles, regardless uh, of the degree of its uh, evolution. And if we compare the ecosystem to the uh, human, uh, we can
can see the same uh, function like uh, we must uh, we must maintain. So freshwater function implanting and and floating lakes and rivers is the same like uh, our organism, I think so. Uh, so what is the difference between human organs and water organs? In my opinion, there is no. Plants and microphytes are the lungs of the waters. Bottom sediments are the liver. Water current are the circulatory system of the blood. The nervous system and the brain are ecological connections between all elements of the ecosystem. So we cannot live without organs, just like natural waters. However, if this happens, we get sick, of course, then it is necessary to uh, treat and maintain our, our lives. The same way to like nature. And what are the patterns that uh, can show us what is the um, structure, the shape, uh, the quality of nature? The tropic chain. The tropic chain shows us which link is responsible uh, for the existence of another link. This very important pattern, however, it does not show us what is the quantitative structure of uh, ecosystem. Tropic pyramid. Tropic pyramid uh, can show us uh, in better way the uh, quality of ecosystem. And the appropriate, appropriate shape of the tropic pyramid indicates good water condition and uh, high biodiversity. Uh, so, what is good water status and high biodiversity, and what is the meaning of good water status and high biodiversity. Uh, tropic pyramid. Uh, in my opinion, uh, this is the most important pattern for the, for the, the ecosystem. Good shape of uh, pyramid show, uh, shows an ecological balance in the ecosystem and uh, it's, it's, good, it's good and high biodiversity. All the rivers uh, should fulfill the borders of pyramid. And what is the functioning of the tropic pyramid? Uh, as you see, yellow fields are needed for reproduction and to keep the population of uh, the species in this uh, river. Blue fields are needed, are needed as a food dish for higher levels. So, which is uh, going to be eaten and which is dedicated for reproduction? Thank God that they are unaware of their destiny. Uh, I think so. Uh, but uh, you see uh, how low biomass is needed to the, maintain the population and how big biomass uh, have to be eaten by, by higher level. Uh, so big. A very, a very common trophic pyramid shape found in the most temperate natural waters, like as you see here. Uh, red boxes mean excess. And too much biomass of some tropic uh, levels causes uh, the lower level of, to drop sharply, and vice versa, this low biomass causes the lower liver to rise sharply. Uh, of course, this is the uh, effect of our um, activity, and I think the best uh, example of that shape uh, tropic pyramid is uh, other river in last year, not, not only last year, uh, in the past. Uh, but uh, I, I will try to describe it in, uh, later in the next slides. For comparison, you see good state and bad state of, uh, of uh, the nature of the ecosystem uh, with uh, good shape and bad shape uh, of tropic pyramid. And thus, the high biodiversity means high number of species. Uh, 
uh, you see here two rivers. Uh, on the right side, we see left. On the left side, uh, we see the river with five uh, species, but uh, higher abundance. On the right side, we see on the river with uh, four species only and lower abundance. In ecology, the biodiversity factors have different meaning than species number. Why the species number is an insufficient factor to evaluate the ecosystem status? Because some species can be random, casual. For example, some species of fish, fish could be introduced. Some could uh, have escaped from the hatcheries. Some of them can, uh, can be not numerous. We can only find one individual of some species, etc. While uh, biodiversity takes into account abundance and number of species, simply. This is the relationship between these two factors. So the biodiversity and the number of species is quite different factor. Of course, for the ecology, maybe government, uh, not maybe, for sure government use uh, the number of species uh, as uh, biodiversity. Uh, and uh, it is good, but uh, not for the ecology pattern, yeah. And value of our diversity factor is lower in left river. Uh, although abundance is higher. Uh, it means that environmental conditions of that river are especially good for one species, for roach only, you see. And uh, in the right river picture, the conditions are similar for every species. So the ecological balance is better. Uh, for the each ecosystem, for the every ecosystem, uh, it's better to uh, have uh, lower abundance uh, because the balance of trophic pyramid is, is better, it's more effective. Do you see here uh, the river beds of the rivers with a uh, good uh, balance of? Uh, Okay. Running waters are water courses that connect the highest and lowest point in the catchment. They flow from the headwaters to the outlet thanks to gravity. I think uh, this is a basic definition of uh, running waters. My student, uh, for my question, what are the rivers? Uh, said that is the section of uh, water uh, longer than wider. And this was the response. I think it was good. But uh, I found the lack of uh, some uh, phenomenon that uh, the rivers uh, flow thanks to gravity. Not uh, by the pump. And um, there are natural or artificial water courses. For example, natural rivers and uh, channels artificial. And uh, down you see the Krivitsky uh, channel. I think now uh, this famous channel of the world uh, because this is the origin of the Prunesium part, part of gold algae uh, in the fresh waters in uh, the middle of Europe. I think now this is the uh, one source of this, uh, of this algae. Uh, but I must say that the Gibbys channel uh, is not flowing water, uh, it's standing water. Uh, we must know it. 
I'm defending the size uh, of the catchment, the catchment area, uh, the length of the riverbed, uh, running quarters should be, not natural waters, Ru running quarters, uh, are divided into stream, group, torrent, and river. And artificial water courses can be divided according to width uh, of, the, of the bed and channel. Channels the bottom is wider than 1.5 meter, and water ditch are narrower than uh, 1.5 meter. Stream. Stream starts from a small spring and usually flows into the river. The stream is characterized by a narrow and shallow bed. Its catchment does not exceed 20 quadrat uh, kilometers. Lowen Brook, uh, larger than a stream, starts from a small spring or from a lake or from a large pond and flows uh, also uh, into the river. The slopes reaching less than the promise, uh, its catchment does not exceed uh, 100 quadrat kilometers. Highland Brook uh, Torrent has the same catchment area like uh, Lowland Brook, in fact, is uh, um, starts from uh, overflowing uh, humming and springs and flows uh, also into the river. The catchment area, the shape of catchment area is very varied uh, with large slopes up to 30 percent. Uh, it looks like the water might explode. Uh, the bed uh, with a 100% uh, slope creates a waterfall. And river. <coughs> river, uh, the largest water course, which periodically flows into the river valley. The catchment area uh, exceeds uh, 100 quadrat uh, kilometers. And uh, we can divide uh, rivers um, into small rivers, uh, playing uh, between 100 and 200 kilometers, average 200 uh, and uh, 500 kilometers, big rivers, we plan uh, between 500 and 2,000 and 500 kilometers, and large rivers above 200 and 500. Uh, 2,500 kilometers. Uh, I don't know, but I think I'm sure that in Poland uh, we have no large river, maybe in Germany, and then I don't know. Uh, if, it, if, if it is a large river. And the types of rivers due to the uh, continuity of something. Uh, I think we should focus only uh, on permanent and periodic rivers uh, because these are um, in our temporary climate. Permanent water is supplied primarily by groundwater during the whole year, at least it should be. And uh, periodic, leading water periodically in the wet season, and the water is supplied primarily by surface plant. Related to areas with dry and uh, rainy seasons. And occasional running and ephemeral uh, are present in Africa, for example. And uh, you see here a cross section of permanent river. The river is supplied by infiltration of water to the groundwater table. This type of river is not periodic because water remains in the ground during the uh, whole year. Mm, I think at least it should be. Uh, the uh, groundwater should uh, stay supplied. supplied um, river bed. And here you see cross section of periodic river. Uh, 
uh, periodic prepare exists until the entire water capacity is infiltrated to the groundwater level. Uh, the groundwater table is much deeper than the river. Unfortunately, a similar phenomenon is more often observed in some rivers with uh, temperate climates. Um, I don't know if you know the Drava River in the Ravinsky National Park. Uh, the upper section of this river is periodic by Africa, the same way. Uh, of course, I think um, the reason of it is a uh, low uh, amount of rainfall and intensive water intake by agriculture and industry. So maybe um, uh, regard to uh, uh, the uh, volume of water in the river beds, we become uh, Africa countries. I don't know. And periodic river, uh, the quality of periodic river is uh, that we can see a bed of periodic rivers even if it is dry. Uh, periodic river is full of water during the wet season and dry during the uh, dry one. Wet season is always in the same time of the year, periodic. And, uh, but, uh, however, ephemeral river, uh, the bed of ephemeral river is not visibly clean. clean. It is hard to see this bed when uh, it is dry, because the rainfall uh, happens once in a few years, or rarely. And types of uh, rivers depending on the shape of river. Straight rivers occur rarely in the wild, uh, most often when the events are regulated by human. Bridled rivers occur in a mountain in Thailand during the high water river uh, or after heavy rains. Meandric rivers are the part of the lowland landscapes. It seems that they are looking for the most part of the soil. And astonishing rivers are creating by connection of few meandering bay. So uh, they occur in lowland, lowland too. Uh, obviously, this type of river depends on valley uh, shape. Generally, we can mention three types of river valleys: a narrow valley shape, uh, far shaped uh, valley, wider valley with sloping walls, and broad valley with uh, white swampy wood plain, with outflow uh, lakes and uh, with uh, mountain channels. Uh, by the way, outflow lakes always increase the availability of water resources, uh, improve water balance and determine water courses, uh, water course flow. It is so important to maintain as many outflow lakes as possible in the riparian zone of the river. Uh, this is especially important during the period of excess water in the river bed. And here you see a uh, mountain river and uh, its outflow in Alaska. I think this is the famous. Uh, sorry, uh, I forgot the name of this river, uh, but I'm sure it flows uh, in, in, in Alaska. And this is the structure of river bed allows to maintain the water for a long time. This is the natural uh, bed of river. Uh, this structure um, maintains the water um, even in low water state. A uh, striped and monotonous bed leads the water to recipient to recipient very quickly. In such diversified rivers, refill pool and trunk create good condition for three different ecological groups of organisms, at least three. <coughs> so the biodiversity status in, in uh, status in such rivers is the best. In addition, the water retention time is uh, in such rivers is longest. 
Moreover, shallower places created by stones, gravel, and wood play a very important role in cell purification process. In run area, numerous macrophages can absorb inorganic nutrients. Therefore, therefore, uh, it is worth to be natural. This is the cheapest way to achieve a long-term effect. And we see here. Um, uh, refill, fast shallow flow over boulders and uh, conduce to the break the water surface. Cool areas, uh, slow flowing, uh, deep water often uh, on the outside of, of beds. And, uh, and ramps, smooth and broken flow, connecting the rivers and, uh, and pools. Uh, and as I said uh, earlier, it's very important to keep uh, for the river the uh, meanders. Uh, river through through the plain. Uh, uh, also, I can say that uh, this is the also most important, maybe not most important, but important part of the river. A flood plain is is, uh, is generally a flat area of land next to the river and the area belongs to the river and it is uh, used during the high water. Uh, Fruit plants have great level, levels of biodiversity. The seasonal riparian wetlands holds greater biodiversity than the rivers themselves. The problem of high waters is when the river uh, inundates the neighboring Plains which are inhabited by humans always. Uh, then human builds uh, levees and takes this precious area away from the river. The river loses its height by diversity, and the water in the narrow bed uh, flows quickly uh, to the sea. And what is uh, high water from the human point of view, of course, uh, this is the danger. Uh, but the danger is uh, only uh, um, only when the uh, people inhabited this, uh, this area. When the people uh, live uh, far away from this area, the uh, high waters not exist because this is uh, the natural phenomenon of the earth. And um, character of every section of river depends, of course, on the landscape. The slope of bed determines value of current velocity and the bed shape. The greater the slope, the narrower and shallower river bed. The lower slope, the wider and deeper river bed. And uh, um, I think the very important part of uh, river section is in the lower course is estuary. Uh, estuaries as ecotones are the sections that are calculated by greatest biodiversity. Uh, perhaps not so great like the coral, coral reef, but a mix of salty and uh, fresh waters gives a possibility to exist for many species. Uh, many water species and birds. A very good example is Szczecin Lagoon. Like this picture, uh, you saw uh, the slide of bed. Um, I don't know if this is the, uh, the correct name Szczecin Lagoon or Ripple Delta. So the, the data is a bit of an artificial name because it's not, not a delta in its uh, geographical yeah, it's 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 sense. So <coughs> it was more or less when the initiative uh, started to present the order of lagoon or the Szczecin yeah. lagoon as a term that is also internationally acknowledged. Uh, the team of people who came together and said, Delta is more common for English speaking because yeah. mm -hmm. we have a complete mixture. Because in Germany, you also say uh, Oderhaft, 
oder Stettina Hub, so in Eastern Germany it was Oda Hub, in Western Germany it was Stettina Hub, you heard Zalev Stettinsky, so there is no common name, and of course for people outside of Germany and or Poland, uh, it's more difficult, so the, the term <coughs> data was created artificially, but of course it's still, I think that the interesting around this landscape is this mosaic and this diversity. You never have a clear one single type. Yeah, yeah. So there are elements of a delta in the Schiene uh, backwards delta. I think it's one of the unique parts in the lagoon. So yeah, it's not, not a correct geographic name. And for sure we know that this is the lagoon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Okay. Uh, um, the most important factor for a river organism is the current velocity. Uh, as I said, and our current velocity uh, determines the physical conditions of uh, river stress and consequently by diversity, species number, abundance, and water quality. Uh, current velocity strongly affects the composition of flora and fauna, uh, and also, also determine the trophic structure of a river. The farther from the uh, spring, the more amount of organic matter, uh, life and death. Such organic matter contains uh, all the organs. Because of very uh, low values of current velocity, the phytoplankton and zooplankton can develop uh, in lower sections of, uh, of river, uh, for example, in lagoon of stretch. Uh, thus, the environmental condition of this section are more similar to lake than to the upper of, uh, or middle section of river. Uh, this part uh, is well explained in river continuum concept, like CM, I think uh, you know. Uh, this is very simple uh, pattern, and uh, we knew it uh, since many years, but in 1980 uh, it was described. Yes. And, uh, this uh, river continuum concept, the paper, this this concept is uh, one of the most cited uh, paper on the world. Uh, why? Because this is sim very simple, but not uh, complicated. Um, <coughs> the next pattern, um, pattern of uh, nutrient spiraling, in my opinion, uh, the most important phenomenon in the rivers, I will describe it uh, another slide. And the catchment area uh, part of this picture shows the same rivers with different using of catchment area. Uh, bigger surface of artificial areas, um, agricultural areas, and urban areas lead to drastically rapid decrease of biodiversity and water retention time. Obviously, the quality of water, the biodiversity factors are worse on the right picture, uh, you see. Um, however, I think there is one mistake in this picture, the water... The down, I think it's that's there. Oh, yeah, but uh, I, I want to uh, I want to say that uh, I, I see the mistake on the right uh, side, uh, right, uh, because uh, the water volume should be much lower uh, because of the using of uh, of uh, catchment by agriculture and uh, industry. Uh, so it is good mistake, I think. So. And um, next question. Uh, uh, what can I respond to you? 
Uh, is the river measured the same way as uh, the lake is? Uh, what uh, threats of rivers are the worst? And uh, what is the organic matter circulation in rivers? In my opinion, my uh, five uh, threats of rivers, uh, how can I say in Polish exactly? Since. Since. Uh, in Polish Catholic uh, tradition, we have uh, five uh, main sins. Yeah? And in my opinion, these sins uh, are the same for the rivers. And uh, the hardest sins. Uh, the first one transformation of riverbeds uh, and lake basins. Second one amelioration of wet wetlands. Uh, first one, irrigation leading water from rivers and lakes beyond the catchment area. Uh, discharge of pollution to natural waters and for me the most important, manipulations in the creation of flow in the field of protection of aquatic ecosystem. Uh, you see here the uh, very disturbed uh, uh, river, straight uh, bed, shallow, and a high amount of suspended soil. Um, in the opinion of many, many people, the dams uh, are mindset uh, of river continuum. Dams and consequently new environment reservoir creates new and much different conditions for river and not difficult for standing waters. Uh, mm, please note that it is not true that reservoir leads to increase of water amount. Why? Uh, what is the factor determining the amount of water in river? Current velocity, depth, width, or capacity. No one separately. All together on. All parameters together create this challenge. So water amount is the river A in the river is measured by this charge, not by depth. Depth can be changed at the any time by human. You can change depth of the river uh, by the building of the dam, and uh, we can uh, have the depth we want to, uh, we want to have. Uh, it is very easy for people nowadays. How dam reservoir, reservoir causes increase of water amount in rivers? No. The influence of this factor is quite different, quite contrary, especially due to big evaporation. And the main factors that show the big similarity of reservoirs to lake are rapid aqua bloom, phytoplankton biomass growth, rapid uh, increase of zooplankton biomass, rapid sedimentation of dead organic matter, rapid increase of phosphor phosphorus and nitrogen contents, and rapid evaporation. Uh, so, it is not true that dam reservoir can increase by rivers. Uh, number of species can be higher, but it doesn't, doesn't mean that by river it is higher. Riverine species are replaced by lake species. Uh, for example, when we uh, build uh, uh, even a small two meters high dam, uh, the River and species uh, number uh, abundance uh, is decreased, and uh, for this place, uh, uh, can get uh, uh, lake species. For example, free species, free river and uh, river and species can be replaced by 20 species of uh, lake species. So, uh, this is the big difference, yes. You remember uh, from the beginning of my lecture, uh, the 
the biodiversity and species numbers is quite different factors. Are quite, are quite different factors. And nutrients pattern shows how is the organic matter circulation in rivers. It decides the biomass value in each section of river. Obviously, it is addicted to value of current velocity. To understand this, the nutrient spiraling in rivers, it is very important to know what is nutrient circulation in legs. I think that uh, pattern is more clear and much easier to understand. Organic matter that was produced uh, in legs uh, is and will be always used the same lake, the same place, <coughs> the same water base. It will be consumed or used by some organism. Later it will be released and used again and again by another organism. During the time bottom, bottom dead organic matter layer of lake becomes greater more and more. The circulation of organic matter in lakes is an important part of eutrophication process. And eutrophication uh, um, is the process by which lakes receive nutrients, phosphorus, and nitrogen from sediments and from the surrounding watershed and become more fertile and uh, shallow. In the reverse, this pattern is quite different. I'm sorry for the quality of this picture, but please believe me, it is very hard to. Uh, paint uh, these pictures in the paint uh, software and in Windows. Uh, so this is my best. Uh, this is my, my best picture. Five minutes. Uh, I used it for. Okay, you're uh, organized, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, let's focus on this uh, this picture. I think this is the most important part. Organic matter produced in the upper zone uh, is drifted with the water current far away to the place where it is used by some organs. Uh, the length of drifting depends on the value of current velocity. The faster current velocity, the length of drifting is farther. So the spiral, spiral, spiral is also longer. In the amount of river to the sea, the current velocity is slow. Thus the circulation process, thus the circulation process in that section is moving in the same place, similar to lake. Therefore, in lower section of river, the planktonic flora and fauna can exist and the amount of organic matter is highest. When we create a dam in the upper or middle section of river, we decrease current velocity. Thus, we make the shorter length of spira and we are creating new condition uh, similar to legs. Um, Another thread, uh, river bed uh, and bank, bank uh, regulation. Most of uh, the art artificial structures concrete asphalt palisade cover the bank, uh, but at the same time limit their role as a their role as a living space for organs. Such rivers lack hiding places for fish and vertebrates. Uh, there are no places to reproduce. The biodiversity of regulated, regulated rivers is very low. And uh, here, meandering remover. Of course, uh, these are advantages and disadvantages. Uh, advantages are easy control over the course of works over the regulated channel, uh, increasing the navigable capacity of the river, seeming but seeming. Possibility of urbanization of coastal uh, areas and seeming food safety. And disadvantages are change of natural character by no biodiversity, significantly accelerated runoff of uh, large mass of water during the wet season, the change of hydrodynamic, hydrodynamic, uh, 
and no lateral erosion, dominance of bottom erosion, uh, increase of suspension in water and groundwater decline. And we create the uh, river uh, quite shorter, uh, at least uh, half uh, length. This is a very big difference. But the water uh, flow to the sea uh, very quickly. A few minutes. <laughs> Um, ecological disaster, what, what is it? Uh, from the uh, um, point of view of major, uh, it's non ecological disaster. Because it's disaster, it's only for the human. Uh, in my opinion, ecological disaster is, uh, is uh, the any tropic pyramid levels uh, affect all the other. Levels. Then the major try to keep an ecological balance. For example, the river natural response to excess of nutrients that are supplied with pollutions is erratic aquaculture. It's simple. Uh, the major is not happen, uh, so it is used uh, in very short time by some organisms that can use it. Uh, the situation is bad. And uh, here you see the um, ecological disaster from the point of view of uh, The natural response of nature is a negative activity. Human is called as ecological disaster. The best example of this other disaster in uh, 2022. And for my point of view, this is a caravan. Uh, <laughs> and the last uh, uh, question uh, also when we um, are used um, by high waters or aqua blooms we, all, uh, we very often said that the nature is true uh, it is not true of course uh, so, is the human cruel by nature when he wants to defend himself against disease and other dangers? Does the defense against danger makes a human cruel? Who is cruel, defender or invite? I think the response is maybe in Richard Dawkins' say, nature, nature is not cruel, it less and indifferent. This is one of the hardest lessons for human humans to learn. We cannot admit that things might be either good or either, either cruel or kind, but simply callous, indifferent, to our suffering, lacking our purpose. Nature has no sense of testimony. For nature, a little kitten, a little cat, is not greater than old Vienna. Uh, they are what they are, and that's all. Um, the river is neither nice or, or ugly. Uh, all the river processes depend on climate and flight landscape. And uh, at the end, for sure. Uh, green compromise. What is it? What does it mean for human and what does it mean for the river? Uh, during the environmental decision process, sometimes like sustainable development and biodiversity mean a lot, but where and when and for who? <coughs> Only for people, uh, not for the nature, yes, and this is important. Uh, so please focus on the green compromise. Almost every decision good for the people is bad for the river. Even small changes caused by human can disturb a river or a stream order. So, the compromise is made between the people only. For example, between ecologists and industri industries. Nature, nature has no voice in the whole decision creating process. So, I think this is the third, uh, the third saying. And uh, maybe um, we should be happy when 
we want to, and we have the opportunity to speak with uh, businessmen. With it is very hard to keep our our thinking as thinking of ecologists. So that's end. That that is the end of my lecture. Thank you very much for the attention.